Hey everyone, and welcome to February's virtual lecture. My name is Carla Gonzalez, and I'd like to introduce you to our speaker today, Philippe Troy, who will generate a 3D geological model from surface structural measurements using Geoscience Analyst Pro and its Python API. If you have any questions during the presentation, please don't hesitate to type them into the Q&A. And just a quick reminder that this is being recorded and it's going to be available on our YouTube channel in the coming days. And without further ado, go for it, Phil. Hey, Carla. Thanks for the, the intro. Hello, everyone. Um, so yeah, we'll in fact be showing you guys how to create a 3D model from uh, surface information. Um, so the motivation behind this is that we often receive from, from clients a data set where we don't have much information at depth. So let's say we have a topography, we have a geological map, maybe some outcrops, and the, the client's gonna have a, um, a geophysical survey that they want us to do inversions on. So we do have to generate a, a 3D model as a block model. And this is what this uh, little workflow that we've created is gonna help you do. So let's jump right into it. This guy here. I'm just gonna open my starting project. So the area I've chosen here is uh, are the Southern Canadian Rockies. So this is the Purcell Supergroup. Um, the red, pink, and blue green units here are sediments, which are later cut by um, by the purple intrusions that you see here. Um, the way the sediments are, are laid out is uh, they form an anticline that's dipping. Uh, kind of shallowly to the north here. So uh, the sediments are dipping west on this portion, dipping north here and dipping east here. And for the sake of this, uh, this exercise, the intrusions are simply gonna be dipping uh, directly down. So 90 degree. Um, what I'll first do is um, have this map displayed on, uh, on our topography using paint on surface, just like that. And um, Right there, you can you know, start digitizing your contacts. Um, to draw curves in GA, you can just, in the, sorry, in Geoscience Analyst, you can just press O, click away, do your thing. When you're done, you press K, left click, escape, and then you have your curve. Um, but for, for today, I'm not gonna have you guys uh, watch me do this. I already have my curves here. Um, as you can see, um, obviously, this is a, just a rough estimate of what's going on here. <clears throat> it's by no means a full representation of the, the complexity we have here. Um, I only have four units, and there's probably like a 20 in here. Um, so the way I name my curves is uh, kind of goes along with the way the script works. Uh, the first number here is going to be the, the priority or the order in which the, uh, the resulting surfaces are going to be coring the box set. I'll come back to this later when we're in uh, when we have our surfaces. It'll be easier. And the suffix here for each of the curves is the uh, the lithology I'll be assigning to the block model with those. So uh, let's say our curves are done. We have a topography. Uh, let's say we also have our structural measurements here that I'm displaying as little tabs. Obviously, those are very simplified as well. They're just for demonstration purposes. So um, the first step I have to do now will be to um, group our curves. This is gonna do a couple, a couple of things. Um, let's start with the sets. Here's a little disclaimer. I'm um, just gonna select my sets here and I'll show you guys what this does. Um, give it a proper name, sets is fine. So what this does is, um, I created a curve group with just the sedimentary units. Um, it has transferred the um, kind of the priority here we had as a prefix as a property that's now stored in the curves. It did the same thing with the uh, lithologies. So those suffixes are now stored in the litho ID property here. I'll do the, the same little step with the, the intrusions. And I'll call those int. There we go. So yeah, we now have two curve groups. One that are the uh, the lithological contacts uh, with the intrusions. One that's with the the sediments. So for this exercise, we're going to have the intrusions dip uh, directly down at ninety degree. 
But we want our sets to be dipping uh, according to the structural measurements that we have on the map, which are currently stored uh, as points here. So we need to transfer those, uh, those properties here, those dip and dip direction properties onto our, our set curve. So to do this, I'm gonna have some, a bit of an intermediary here, which is a 2D grid so that we can interpolate the value smoothly. I'll use this tool here to automatically fill in the, the properties. I'll just make the, the cells a little bit bigger because this is a very regional model. And press create. Uh, I'm then going to use the minimum curvature gridding tool here and uh, take the dip and dip direction properties from my points and apply them to the, the grid. Again, very large number here because this is regional. So my, um, my grid now has two properties, dip and dip direction. And now uh, that's ready to be transferred to the, to the, uh, the, the curves that are our contacts using the transfer data tool, uh, grid, dip and dip there on our sets uh, group curve, press apply. So um, now our sedimentary units have a dip and a dip direction property. And now that we, that we have those two things, there is a neat little trick that we can do to display in 3D uh, those vectors. I'll, I'll show you guys real quick. I'm gonna use the group, group data tool here. I'm just gonna call this X. And now what this does basically is it creates a 3D vector that we can then use to display um, arrows with using the orientation submenu. So this is a good um, time to make sure that um, our contacts are gonna be dipping the way we want them to. So this looks pretty good. As I explained earlier, the, uh, the Western portions dipping West, the Eastern portions dipping East and kind of the middle will be dipping North. So this is what we want. And um, uh, yeah, I think we're now ready to, to project those curves in 3D and uh, create surfaces. So we're gonna use our second script here, which is a uh, surface from curve. I'll start with our sediments. Um, copy data as if you wanna, uh, we do want to transfer our um, lithological properties as well as a priority onto our surfaces. You could you know, input those later, but for now, this is all done. So we'll use those. Um, in this menu here, you have the choice between in, in, uh, inputting a hard value or using values that are on your, uh, your contacts. In, in our case, we just interpolate our, our dip and dip direction values. So, so that's what we want to use. Um, the distance above field here is, is mostly a, a, um, a buffer because uh, depending on, on how you digitize your curves, then you might be you know, above or below your topography depending on, on how it varies. And this just makes sure that, uh, uh, yeah, that everything that's in your, your topography is gonna get included in the surface. You could also just project your curves upward, but uh, I've never done it, but you, you could absolutely do it. And this is uh, how far down you're gonna project your, your curves. I'm gonna call this suds and surf, press enter, enter. I'll quickly do the same thing for the intrusions. So surface from curves, intrusion. I'm gonna leave this hard data here. So 90 degree down, the direction does not matter. And I'll use the same buffer again. Uh, yeah, that looks good. Intrusion, surf. So we now have uh, two groups of surfaces that represent uh, either the, our intrusions or our sedimentary units. Um, so now is a good time to kind of go through how the, the querying process works. Um, I'm in the sets right now, I'm just gonna display the priority uh, values. So the way the querying works is it'll start with the, the first priorities. So this is priority one. So uh, the block cells that will fall within the surface are going to be given the, the, the litho ID value of the surface. Uh, once that's done, it'll move along and uh, go to the, the, the priority two surfaces. And again, everything that's within this, uh, this surface will be given a, uh, the value of this lithology. And that's going to overprint 
uh, the first guy we create. So the second one is going to overprint the first one and it'll move along until um, we've gone through all the surfaces. I hope that that's clear and you, you can see the results when we're done. So with that, we're almost ready to build our block model. The only thing we need is a block model. Let me just create that real quick using the block model designer tool. Um, yeah, oh, so I'm gonna cheat a little bit here. I've done this before. So I know the numbers. So let's just make sure that um, we cover the whole kind of vertical extent of our topography with the block model. Um, this is looking good to me. So I can go ahead and press create. There we go. Uh, one more thing we have to do is to create a background value. So um, the, uh, the block cells that, uh, that are not gonna fall within any surface are gonna be given the uh, uh, kind of a background value, which is what I'll do now. Um, all right, so I just created a, a property. For now, all the, the block cells have the background litho value and we're gonna overprint those with the, uh, with, uh, yeah, with our surfaces. So we're now ready to, to build a model. I'm just gonna go to Python again, use the model from surface tool. Um, mesh is where we select our block model. This is the, the name of the new property we'll be creating. I'm just gonna call this litho one. We'll be appending this to the background lithology. Uh, topography is uh, our SRTM surface here. Um, basically, uh, once all the, the, the surfaces have been queried, the, the script is just gonna take everything that's above the topography and apply a no data value to those uh, block cells because you don't want those to be lithologies uh, when you're running the inversion. Surface A is going to be our sets. Um, reference ID is the property you want to transfer to the block model. In our case, it's the litho ID. Um, this is the, the priority property. Uh, our surface B are going to be your intrusions. So same thing here, litho ID and uh, priority. So um, the way this works is it'll start by querying all the surfaces in the surface A uh, kind of menu here, and then it'll do the surface B. So if you wanted, you can name your, uh, your sedimentary, sedimentary units one, two, three, four, five, oh, sorry, use uh, priorities one, two, three, four, five, and then use those priorities again for your intrusions. And as long as you put your intrusions after your sediments, then they're gonna overprint your sediments. So uh, with that, we're ready to go. Just gonna press okay. So um, while this runs, I, I just want to point out to you guys that uh, going from the, the idea of doing this to a fully working prototype took me about a weekend and I'm by no means uh, a Python wizard. It's just really easy now to access your objects in, in, in uh, geoscience analysts. And with Python, you have access to the, the, the full ecosystem and community that it has. So, I mean, the sky kind of is the limit to what you can do with this. And, um, and if you don't want to do it, you can absolutely just reach out to us and we can create custom tools for you uh, if you want as part of uh, consulting work. So yeah, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, all right, that's done. Let's look at our model. Uh, I'm just going to give those units the proper color. Real quick, uh, thread. I'm also gonna hide cage and grid. So this is our model. Um, as you can see, the, the Western end of it is dipping west as we thought, the Northern end is dipping north. Uh, those are my sets. And you can see the purple units, which are the intrusions are in fact uh, dipping straight down as we wanted them to. If I kind of move through this box set, you can see that everything that's above the topography is given a no data value. That's transparent here. Uh, this is why we're seeing the, the glacial valleys here. And as we move down, we can see that the intrusions are, yeah, they're not moving because they're, they're just vertical and the sediments are moving 
according to the, the closest dip and dip direction kind of measurement that we had before. Uh, yeah, like that. Um, so yeah, you could you know go ahead and feed this to your geophysicist and uh, start iterating with forward, forward models and then create a new log model and yeah, start iterating away. Um, in this example, I've used uh, curves that I've digitized because I wanted to create something like a rough model, but you could absolutely just import curves from let's say uh, RGS as a shapefile and project those downward. Or you could even just import uh, DXS directly from whatever software you're using and, and use those scripts. So you, you don't have to use these three scripts together. You can also just use the last one and build your model. Um, yeah, I think that that's it for me, Carla. Great. Um, thank you, Phil. And thank you to everyone who joined us today. And for those who are here live, feel free to type any questions you may have or raise your hand. Um, we'll wait a little bit for that, for you to type your questions. Um, and in the meantime, though, um, I'll tell you that if you have any questions in the future, to please send us a note at support at marriageofscience.com. And uh, no questions yet. So I'll just keep telling you um, that we're going to see you next month when Thomas Campaign is going to show some crustal scale gravity modeling and isostatic correction over central Chile using Geoscience Silence Pro Geophysics. And we have a comment, great tool, awesome. Uh, we have one question, Phil. Um, is it possible to convert shape files to the curves that you used? Of course, well, actually, the when you import shape files um, into geoscience analysts, they're automatically going to be converted to curves. So you don't have to do anything. You just drag it in there, and you're going to have your curves. Uh, one thing I, I want to mention as well is that uh, you could absolutely use surfaces that are not closed. So um, if you want to use like the, uh, the, uh, the surface designer tool here and create, I don't know, fancy sedimentary surfaces that are undulating in weird ways, you could absolutely do this here and then run the queries. You just have to mine the, um, in which direction your surface is pointing, but this is absolutely uh, something you could do with this if you wanted. Great. Um, could you use Python API to do implicit modeling? Uh, <laughs> I guess like you can. That's, that's, yeah, Gempy uh, is the suggested option there. You could plug Gempy into in, into GA. I'm pretty sure. I, I have not done it personally, but I don't see why you could not. I so, actually um, got a chance to try it out the other day. I, I wrote it. I made a block model all in Python, and then just wrote out the model to visualize in 3D um, in Geoscience Analyst. Okay. But I'm sure we could integrate it a little bit more too. Yes. So the answer is yes, you can do it. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Great. Uh, we'll just wait a couple more seconds to see if uh, anything else comes up. Okay. Uh, what is the main difference is advantage from this versus leapfrog in structural point of view, it seems? What's leapfrog? No, I'm <laughs> kidding. Um, main advantage, I think this can, uh, it's easier to deal with less data. I think that's what the, this is going to, this is what the edge this has already. But this is just a script that, that I know I personally made in two days. I'm not trying to compete with, with anyone. <laughs> this is just something I, uh, like it's a workflow that I did before that I just decided to automate in a script. So uh, it's different. Mm-hmm. And then do you use these models for fluids dynamic simulation, for example? I personally do not know anything about fluid dynamics, <laughs> but this is basically just to populate a box. It. I'm, I did, I use the lithology here. If you want to use any property you want, you, you could do it too. If you think that, you know, projecting curves downward with a certain strike and dip is what you need to do, you could apply this to any type of property you want. Right. Um, Another question, is it possible to add linear data as in faults? Yes, of course. So uh, in this example, I use closed curves that I projected down and uh, kind of created a closed surface with it. But if you want, you could absolutely have uh, you know open curves that you project down in the same way that I did and it'll create 
a fault that'll be dipping according to the strike and dip uh, dip and dip direction properties that you interpolated on it. So absolutely, you can you could do that. Great, awesome. And so it it seems that's it. Um, yeah, great. Uh, so I'll just mention again that we'll see you next month when uh, Thomas Campaign will show us how to do some crustal scale gravity modeling and isostatic correction over central Chile using geoscience analysis pro geophysics. And uh, yeah, so see you next month. See you guys. Thank you, everyone.